And before we begin with the panel discussion, I will request Mr. Atul to take the dais for his presentation. Yes, yes. So would you like to address the, I think we can do it right now. I request you to take the dais to address the gathering. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, that way, we are, we are panel is lucky that we are not immediately after lunch. So probably uh, everyone is uh, awake. But of course, it is in between the tea time and uh, lunch. So it's also challenging for us. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Upal Bhai, uh, JK Group. Uh, for this wonderful event and uh, I have, want to congratulate uh, from bottom of my heart to the team Chini Mandi and I also want to send a message uh, which I got from uh, our founder chairman Dr. Chaudhary congratulating the young team and uh, he could not be part of this but then he conveyed the message to you that best wishes and next year it, he will be definitely here. On the topic of farm to fuel and uh, really I am surprised to see because it's typically any technical sessions or any trading sessions, this is a topic which is a sort of an odd man out topic. But despite that, you have taken this farm to fuel as one of the uh, prominent topic with such a great panelist around. Uh, it's a great thing uh, and it's going to be more uh, learnings for me also from the, uh, listening from the, all these panel members. The farm to fuel, uh, probably we had touched base since the morning session, uh, inauguration session by Honorable Dr. Uh, Nitin Gadkariji. We also touched on these couple of sessions in the morning and in also these panel discussions. It is typically, we have a concept in uh, fossil fuel, a will to will. And from a will to will, probably this got derived as a farm to fuel as a concept and is nothing but capturing the carbon intake and carbon outtake coming from the respective sessions or unit operations. And uh, that's what the farm to fuel in short. Agriculture farm to fuel, if you see, and that's what the one of the major topic of discussions even this morning session that it has been picked up at the various level. Now we talk about an ethanol from a first generation ethanol could be sugar streams or could be the grain ethanol. The CI number is typically is uh, in the range of roughly for a molasses side it could be about 35, uh, for the grain side it could be 40 and the gasoline CI number is about 90. There is always a target to have a lower CI number reduction and that's what the race is for. And when we calculate the CI number, the importance of life cycle analysis is very, very important. So whenever there is a concern coming from a carbon reduction, carbon abatement, automobile industry generally look from the abatement from the tailpipe perspective. And then the always on a tailpipe perspective, the e-vehicles always claim a greater, greater opportunity. But in reality, the, it is to be seen from the LCA and when we talk about an LCA life cycle analysis, the farm to fuel becomes a very, very important aspect. In the context of first generation again, the today in all said and done, there are no measuring systems still established in the country like India, but globally it is established. From a first generation, whether it is sugar or the grain, roughly around 75 to 80 percent the CI actually gets contributed from the agriculture practices. From a process side, probably it is between 12 to 15, and from the automobile side, from the wheel side, it is probably five to six. At the same time, so there are very little to be played from a process side of it, but at the same time, there are many things which we can play from an agriculture side of it and agriculture practices. As Mr. Deepak Balani was mentioning today in the morning session that the India probably will score much better CI number over the probably Brazilians or other countries because we have farming practices are different. Our agriculture practices are different. Our area of operation is different. Probably we are not so much mechanized as the mechanized Brazilians we are having. Of course, Vijendra Singh will probably talk more about the Brazil CI numbers and here, but he is an expertise uh, from Brazil. But at the same time, if you talk about the CI number which come from the second generation, or cellulosic ethanol, it's exactly the other way around. Since it is coming from an agro-based mass, the agriculture practices are just contributing to almost like probably 15 to 20 percent. The majority of it come from the process side of it. Probably it is roughly around 80 or so. And then about five years in from the tailpipe side of it. Uh, in the process of it, we'll have to actually work on each of them. Agriculture practices, unit operation process, as well as from automobile side of it. India, as a country which uh, has a huge potential and a land, 
and variety of field stock available at the same time variety of field stock as well as the advanced biofuels coming from the agro base there's a great potential to calculate the ci and be one of the best ci number producers low carbon ethanol producer in the world because of the inherent advantage only challenge with us is today we are not able to calculate neither we are able to validate we are no present practice as of now as like probably you have a practice like reno bio in brazil you have practice in us low carbon ethanol standards and probably some of the european gnl red2 standards are coming in the need from india is very very important to come out and this need is going to come uh, immediately what we can see the sustainable aviation fuel this was a topic which uh, honorable mr gadkari was also talking about the aviation industry is mandated to blend from an indian perspective 1% from 27 onwards and my 5% by 30 and probably in global standard they are talking about that 30% blending by 2050 and that is going to be uh, one challenge because they are going to buy aviation industry is going to buy on the ci number and if you want to sell the our ethanol or advanced biofuel or aviation fuel on the ci number we must have a measuring system and validation system on the ci number and that is a need and uh, in that direction probably today it has started from the aviation side but nevertheless the transport sector is also going to call for the ci number unfortunately from a grain side today in indian context as the seen in the morning session also uh, the ci number is higher than that of uh, the sugar streams and there are also many challenges but there are also we can also do much better from a grain side uh, for reduction the ci number that's what the exactly the us is doing having said that uh, this is a perspective from the farm to fuel and maybe we will go into details of it but i also want to take this opportunity to just pick up some of the leads taken uh, from the honorable ministers gadkari saab morning speech and what is happening in indian context what is happening from i am coming from praj probably all of you know the praj but what is happening because every time whenever we meet gadkari saab he always used to give us a challenge that you have to be cost effective you have to be competitive you have to compete with the fossil fuel and that's why the importance of co product valorization was always on the top of his uh, agenda and whenever he visited our technology center whenever he visited us whenever we had a discussion in the various forum and that's why some of the thing which we are referred i want to just talk about that what are the new things coming from technology innovations in praj let's start with the bitumen now the bio bitumen which he was referring it to in this morning that we had uh, developed a technology and commercially available now to take out the bio bitumen from the lignin and this bio bitumen is a source which is basically from rice straw or bagasse for that matter uh, and it can be used from a second generation ethanol as well as from the compressed biogas plant so we have taken this taken out this lignin bio lignin and uh, made a bio bitumen about two and a half years back uh, he has given us a challenge to lay a road in gujarat in service road was laid in the gujarat and was certified and tested by central state research institute from road transport this road has seen three monsoons uh, two peak season two peak summers in of gujarat based on the success of that then subsequently somewhere in the month of december he has given us an opportunity to lay down about some kilometers roads in the national highway near nagpur so that's what is coming from a bio bitumen the beauty of bio bitumen co product valorization is that today as i said there is a 50% by bitumen is imported and which fetches between 35 rupees to 40 rupees that is 35000 to 40000 rupees a ton as a value and this is an import substitute volumes are very high if you really convert our raw material input from the bio lignin uh, lignin bio bitumen side our cost of feedstock practically comes to zero whether it is 2g or a cbg the cost of feedstock zero makes major difference so that's on bio bitumen side second thing he also talked about corn as one of the feedstock and corn is always facing a challenge on two front can we have a corn valorization at the same time corn ethanol faces a challenge of a deleterious quality aflatoxins and mycotoxins coming out of this because the practice of as a farming the practices uh, typically coming from the agriculture as well as storage uh, they are beyond control of any manufacturers and then the aflatoxin comes and the your deleterious has less value and probably you have to sell the dgs probably discount at about 20 20% more so here also we have identified the need and uh, developed a technology a unit operations as well as performance enhancers which reduces to the extent of almost like 85 to 90% of aflatoxin level back to the normal and we have tested it on a full scale dgs basis also that's the second thing coming in 
So is the case valorization. The distilled corn oil is the one which we have successfully tried, and it has gone for the biodiesel production also. And the results uh, are encouraging, and now it's become absolutely commercially viable thing. The fourth thing which is coming from rice, because rice always uh, fetches that food versus fuel sort of a thing. But at the same time, government, as we've seen from the panel also, that there is ad adequate rice and food grains available. We have developed a technology taking out the human protein out of it. And we have developed a human protein, uh, which was also tested by the uh, Food Craft Research Institute Mumbai. And they, are, they have tried with high protein dosas, high protein idlis, high protein cookies, high protein biscuits. And those are also available in some of the segments there. So these are the valorizations. Actually, we can give you cross-subsidizing the product. And today, the main challenge all the time we face the one rupee extra, one rupee fifty paisa extra with the government. Probably, as uh, Minister Sir was saying, don't have to depend on the government. Probably, you can create your own valorization in such a way that you can be competitive enough. That's not the case. One more thing, which we talked about in sustainable aviation fuel. And as I said, we have uh, uh, flown one flight during last May uh, from Pune to Delhi, Air Asia, with uh, one person blend which was received by uh, none other than Honorable uh, Hardeep Singh Puri ji here uh, in the collaboration with IOCL. So we have joined Banjir with IOCL for sustainable aviation fuel. So whether it is sustainable aviation fuel, whether it is valorization of corn, whether it is valorization of rice, whether it is valorization of feedstock from a 2G and CBG, this technology is available. And this is not only that, so this is club with the farm to fuel concept and ensuring the inclusive growth. One of the points which again and again even Mr. Deepak Balani also given some references that about lack of a crore rupees get saved for foreign exchange for over 87,000 rupees gone back to the farmer. So this is where we are also talking about inclusive growth. The beauty of farm to fuel is it's not only the CI reduction but it also talks about the inclusive growth and that's where probably India is leading um, a role model uh, from a GBA platform. Uh, on that background, uh, I don't want to take much of your time. Thank you very much, uh, Upalbhai and Chini Mundi. Uh, thank you, panel, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Mule. I think for setting that context of our discussion today. Uh,